Hey guys, Will here and welcome to another painting tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you a quick and easy method to paint a Necron Destroyer. Um, and while it's a destroyer that I'm focusing on for this, you could really use this for just about anything in a Necron army. In fact, that's part of the reason that I'm using a destroyer, because it contains both the sort of metallic elements, like a lot of the Necron infantry, while also having these smoother parts like um, a lot of the Necron vehicles. So the idea in this is that it has elements of both and I'll be teaching you both in this video. So whether it's a Necron warrior or a Triarch stalker or anything above or in between, this technique is going to cover the sort of the basics you need for all of them. Now, like I said, this is going to be a quick and easy technique aiming for tabletop standard. So they're going to use things like washes, dry brushes extensively um, and not a lot of focus on, on extensive layering. So uh, it's, yeah, it's designed to be a quick technique to get an army done to tabletop standard, not sort of competition star painting. So if that's what you're looking for, then, uh, if, you know, a quick and easy technique is what you're looking for, then you've come to the right place. So obviously this guy's already painted. This is the guy I'm going to be working on here. So, um, yep, basic Necron Destroyer. Um, I've assembled him and primed him in Chaos Black Undercoat. Um, one thing you will notice is I've left the rods out there. Obviously, for doing a quick and easy Necron, uh, yeah, quick and easy Necron, you want to leave the weapon rods out till the end because then you can just stick them in. Obviously, if you do want to paint them in a different colour to what they come in, then yeah, sure, leave them in and. Um, paint over them that's totally fine but um, for what I'm doing today I'm leaving them out. So first thing I'm going to do is do all the metal parts of this model which is going to be the vast majority of the bits um, and so for that I first just want to base coat them um, and this is also quite a messy process which is why I'm doing it first. So first colour we're going to need is lead belcher, uh, the nice sort of metallic grey base paint and I'm going to paint that on all the metal parts so that's going to be all the body here, these sort of connecting bits, the limbs, this sort of spinal column along here and also um, all along the base here so it's going to be the vast majority of the model just really leaving the weapon and this sort of carapace section here in the black to start with so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then show you how it looks. And there we go, that's a nice simple step to do there, just uh, painted all silver. Um, and as you can see, it's been quite a messy stage, I've gone over in a few places. That's absolutely fine because we're going to come back and neaten those up at the end. Um, but in the meantime, it's just a case of getting the, uh, the paint down as quickly as possible. Now, once that's dry, the next step is to give him an ink wash. Um, you can use a variety of different colours depending on, on the exact effect you use. I mean, often for metal I will use Null Oil, but for today I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade, which adds a slightly more ancient feel to the model, sort of somewhere between old engine oil and rust in the sort of the recesses. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just cover all the bits that we've just done in silver with this Agrax Earthshade to give it a shade. OK, so now our Necron looks a bit darker and a bit dirtier. He's uh, been shaded down nicely by the Null Oil. Um, and the next thing, uh, sorry, not Null Oil, Agrax Earthshade. So he's, uh, he's looking nice and dark, a little bit sort of, of brown and ancient, but um, he's probably a bit too dark for what I want. So the next thing is going to be to do an overbrush with our original colour again, Lead Belcher. So um, the aim with this is to bring back some of the the metallic look to the raised surfaces uh, while still leaving the recesses looking um, looking sort of ancient and, and sort of that mucky brown colour. So um, for overbrushing it's uh, like dry brushing but not as dry. Essentially you um, start um, by loading up your brush with paint then you know wiping off a good majority of it leaving just uh, a small amount left on the brush but more than you would for a dry brush and then you just sort of brush back and forward over the model as you would for a dry brush. The aim is that you should have enough paint that 
it still catches um, the raised and flat surfaces but the recesses stay in the original darker colour. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and then I'm going to come back and show you the next step. So you can see here he's uh, looking quite shiny again but um, he's still got the darkness and sort of the ancientness in the recesses for example um, in like between the two arm bones there I say bones for want of a better word they're really uh, bits of metal but uh, to finish this uh, metallic part off just going to give him a dry brush in Necron compound obviously ideal colour for dry brushing a Necron and unlike the previous overbrush where you wanted to still have a little bit of, uh, of noticeable paint on the brush here you really want to get it so there's virtually nothing left so when you brush over him you're only, you're only going to catch the sharpest raised surfaces to uh, produce a highlighting effect so that's what I'm going to do now and then we're going to work on some of the other parts of the model okay so that highlight has now given us some nice sharp edges and the metallic part of the model is basically done now if you wanted this to look a bit darker you could either give it a second ink wash or skip out the overbrushing steps so you just uh, dry brush straight over the ink wash or um, something like that but uh, for what I'm doing this uh, this is quite nice but it's uh, a good thing with Necrons that although they're all metal you can do metal in quite a number of ways but this is just a, a quick simple method I like to do. Now the next bit I'm going to work on is part of the face. Now if you uh, see on my other model here the one I'm uh, sort of aiming to match um, the face has got this like skull mask and that's just something I do with my Necrons to make them uh, look a little bit different um, and you can see this is kind of a, a bone colour I think it's reflecting a little bit too much off the light let me just bring it over this, oh, this side yeah so there you go now to base coat this um, I'm going to start off with this colour here XV88 one of my favourite colours for painting all sorts of things as like a base colour to work over um, and so on this I'm just going to be aiming to get the um, just the front part of the mask um, the, sort of the front part of the face leaving this uh, back part here in a more um, in the sort of the original metallic just going over this sort of front section here so I'm going to head and do that and then show you how I layer this up to produce this bone effect so over the XV88 you then want to paint in the main bone colour um, now this is I believe Screaming Skull although it's lost its label it's equivalent to the old bleach bone and you want to paint a layer of that over the majority of the face um, the bits you're trying to just sort of leave out uh, like the mouth um, and there's like a little bit uh, I don't know if you can see it very well on this camera just sort of under there under the cheekbone and a little bit sort of on the edges around the back just the deepest recesses you want to leave in XV88 and then put this bone colour over everything else then to finish off the bone effect on the skull I'm going to give it a dry brush with Palexia white um, this is the uh, the pure white dry paint from GW and the aim here would be just to focus on the very sharp edges so for example so the side of the skull there, the cheekbones, the eyebrows, sides of the jaw, just giving them a dry brush to uh, highlight them. And then I'll come back to show you how that looks and then go on to the next part. So that's finished off this guy's skull and now we're going to move on to the areas that need to be blocked out in black. Um, so for this I'm just going to block out anything that I want to be black also that's going to be dark green because I use a black as a base coat for that. I'm going to use Abaddon black for that and the areas that I'm looking at here are first and foremost the gun um, so all along here basically the whole gun apart from this sort of metallic piping and the arm that's holding it in place. The whole of this sort of carapace area at the back being careful not to paint over any of the bits I want to keep silver and also the other half of the face which is uh, this sort of like targeting um, area here sort of like a targeting eye lens with multiple eyes in it that is going to be black to start off with so I'm going to block all those out with Abaddon black and then show you what we're going to do with those 
So the next thing to do to our Necron is to highlight the gun now that all the black areas have been blacked out and um, for that I'm just going to use a really simple dry brushing technique. I find that for um, for painting guns that are kind of, uh, sort of meant to be painted black metal um, that just painting them black and then giving them a simple dry brush in Dawnstone works really nicely. It's a very straightforward technique but uh, it achieves the results that we want. So I'm just going to uh, give it a very light dry brush in Dawnstone just to pick out the edges and uh, then come back and show you what we do next. So you can see here just with a very quick dry brush there the gun is looking, uh, looking nice now. I've got all the edges picked out. So the next thing to work on is going to be the carapace and also this sort of uh, half eye lens mask thing. Um, for that I'm going to use Caliban Green um, and I'm going to essentially do something somewhere between layering and overbrushing for this. The idea is that all the top surfaces um, should all be in this colour while the recesses remain black. So um, those recesses are going to include things like the underside, um, uh, sort of the, the deep recesses there, uh, these like vents and possibly a little bit um, along here still in black but for the most part it's going to be this Caliban green. So I'm going to go and uh, do that now and show you how that looks and then we're going to highlight it. So to highlight the green areas I'm going to use Moot Green which is this very bright green colour and I'm going to use an edge highlighting technique for that just painting a thin line across all the edges and the corners or the raised surfaces um, and just to show you on this model that's uh, roughly what I'm aiming for I think this one's a little bit scrappy I did this a while ago but uh, that, that sort of general effect now normally this colour jump from Caliban green all the way up to Moot green, so a very very dark green up to a really bright vivid green would be too much but for Necrons um, it's often how they're depicted, um, particularly the living metal parts of them depicted in Games Workshop's artwork and so uh, trying to sort of achieve that effect by doing that and I find for, uh, for my Necron army for a uh, a basic paint scheme this works quite nicely so I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of the corners and all the edges in moot green so that's uh, really brightened up our Necron Destroyer now um, as you can see it's almost got this sort of like glowing living metal effect it's a very uh, very basic way to do it but for our purposes that does the job and uh, just leaves uh, just a very small number of things left to do on him Next thing I'm going to look at is the eyes um, on my test model that I've got here. You'll see the eyes are glowing red and it's a very simple process to do that. Just going to uh, start by base coating the whole of the eye lens and around it but inside the socket in corn red. Now at this stage it might be a case that um, some of the paint goes onto the surrounding areas. That's okay we can just come back and tidy that up when you're finished. So I'm going to go ahead and base coat all the eyes in corn red. And next I'm just going to paint in the raised section of the middle of the eye where the actual eye lens would be in Evil Sun Scarlet, um, leaving the corn red in the recesses around it. Okay, so that's the eyes finished off. It um, doesn't show overly well on this camera, but it's a, a nice little simple effect for slightly menacing red eyes, particularly on the, the lens where he's got more than two. Um, gives him a nice sort of uh, scary look. Now the final part is going to be to finish off um, all the fine details. Um, and so that's going to be the chest where he's got the, uh, the Necron symbol, the Ankh of the Triarch. Um, this little bit of piping on the top of his head, the pipes coming off the gun and then the like the power generator section of the gun and all of these bits I'm going to base coat in warpstone glow. Um, let's see if I can find my pot of warpstone glow here. Uh, warpstone glow where are you? No, that's liquid green stuff. Okay, well I'm going to go and find my pot of warpstone glow and then base coat all of these parts in that. 
So there we go, I've painted all the, um, the bits that are going to be green in Warpstone Glow. And then the first one I'm going to be working on is these like uh, power generator parts on the back of the gun. And as you can see, these have got a very nice sort of ribbed texture on them. So the simplest way to paint them now is just to give them a very gentle overbrushing in moot green, just to um, sort of uh, pick those out and make them, them shine a bit. So I'm going to do that and then show you the next bit. And there you can see that uh, makes nice use of the texture there to give it a little bit of a, a glowing green effect. Now staying with this same colour moot green, the next thing I'm going to do is just paint the um, the raised parts of the ank symbol in the middle of the chest. And I'm just going to paint all of these in a very fine sort of highlight of moot green. So uh, that's given some definition to the symbol in the middle of the model's chest. And now we are almost there, just a couple more things to do. So the last bit I'm going to paint is these, um, these like power cables. As you can see, I've already base coated them in Warpstone Glow. And the next colour I'm going to use is Warboss Green. I'm just going to paint a line of this over sort of the outside edge, going sort of covering to about two thirds of the outside edge um, in like a, a crescent shape following the line of the the line of the cable so I'm going to do that to the ones on the weapon here and also the one on the head there um, and then I'll come back and show you what that's meant to look like. Okay so you can see here the basic shape that we're going for with that um, and then we're going to highlight that within the line we've already drawn and for that we're going to be using moot green again and then I'm going to finish this part off with just a little fleck of white within the green bit we've already done. And for this, I'm going to use dead white from Vallejo. OK, and that is all the painting on the model finished. And uh, all that's left to do now is attach the little uh, clear plastic rods into the weapon. Now, some tutorials will recommend gluing these in. Um, if you're going to do that, then PVA is probably the best sort of glue to use rather than super glue or plastic glue because it will um, it will dry clear and won't tend to cloud the clear plastic, whereas some other glues can do that. Um, but personally, I find with this particular model, you don't actually need any glue. They'll just clip into place without needing any glue. And there we have it. The Necron Destroyer is now completely finished. Um, as I said, this is a, a quick and easy method to do it. So I hope uh, hope you guys found this interesting and useful for uh, sort of painting large numbers of Necrons. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you again soon for more painting tutorials. Bye.